I know it's hard to believe, but August is almost over. We are getting into the final quarter of the year. Now is the time for you to get your financial shit together. Get it together for the end of this year and get it together for the beginning of next year so that you don't even have to think about it through 2023. Do this by hiring Molly Morris at m3virtualaccounting.com. I hired her last year and I truly wish I had done it years ago. Have a free consultation and see if she can help you at m3virtualaccounting.com. This is an unspoiled network podcast. This is unspoiled covering Ted Lasso season one, episode seven, make Rebecca great again. In this episode, the team travels to Liverpool and they face a team that they have never beaten for 60 years and then they beat them. But that's actually not the most amazing part of this episode. <laughs> Welcome to Unspoiled. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. I would like to applaud you, Rashawn, for remembering that this was an intro and not <laughs> jumping in and asking me what my favorite thing was. Nope. Nope. <laughs> not going to do it. She didn't do it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I totally lost my mind at the end of this episode. I, I can't about believe you. it ended there and I'm really mad about it. <laughs> There's Between so this and covering Cradle, there's a, the new Cradle book I just started, and I have to stop after like one chapter per because they've been long. It's killing me. My mm -hmm. job is always so full of sacrifice, you guys. <laughs> it's not. It's not. But it has been particularly difficult lately because I'm not used to being the unspoiled one for so much that I'm like desperate for. So well, 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 really, well, well, I, well, well. I want to know. You know what is that? You guys what, know what is that? Michael Scott quote: "How the turntables, how the turn, how the turns table." <laughs> yep. So Tell me before we get into it, like into it. I love this episode. This is one of my top like five episodes of the two seasons that we've had so much. And that's saying a lot because literally every episode is like a top five episode for me. But this is like for real, for real. For real, for real. Really one of like my top favorite episodes. Uh, what do I want to ask? I know how you felt at the end. Uh, well, never mind. I'm not going to ask anything. I'm just going to get into the episode because I want to ask everything. <laughs> so. <laughs> so Roy and Keely make out Everybody, <laughs> did you die? Did you die? I Tell me you died. So you died, right? You don't even know. I just, I'm looking at him, like coming toward her in the hall, and I'm going, "Do it, do it, do it!" And then he does, and then he really does, and I'm like, "Yes!" And then he pulls away and says, "Good night." And I was like, "Mm-hmm," because he knew he was about to put her up against that wall, and he had to stop himself, <laughs> and he doesn't know how to handle feelings. <laughs> Seems right. <laughs> so was, he doesn't know how to handle feelings, so he just was overwhelmed. <laughs> That's my assumption. Is just like he. This is. I think that this can happen where if there's somebody that you've been like into for a minute, and things begin to move forward, you suddenly have an oh god, like it's too fast. Even if it really isn't too fast, and I've been waiting for it for seven episodes now. <laughs> Um, you personally have been waiting for it. <laughs> this really just feels like they've been toying with me personally, but <laughs> I, uh, I really, her moment of kind of stopping and like smelling her breath, <laughs> like she took it personally that he backed away. Mm. I saw him pull away and I immediately was taking it as a compliment. Like that felt like he 
almost started to tear her clothes off and caught mm-hmm. himself and felt like I need to be a gentleman. I can't just like go to right. bed with her immediately. And I think, you know, I understand her kind of being self-conscious for a minute because it was abrupt. But as we know, right. he is abrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I love just be that, that way. it is like so clear that she has been in a position of, if I'm ready to throw it at somebody, people don't just be like, nah. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. what what is wrong with me? Because it's like never happens to her. <laughs> yep. And right. I mean, I just, okay, yeah. We're going to start from All the right. beginning. All right. Let's start from the beginning. Let's I love this episode it. so much. It's so good. Yeah, this is a really good one. And there's, is it 12 or 10 for the first season? can't remember oh my god guys in the chat help me out i feel like it's 10 the first season and 12 the second season because we got that sounds right i feel like i remember it being longer the second season but anyway we start off with the uh bus getting loaded up (laughs) and then nate being like no 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 that's not how you load it and climbing inside and then getting (laughs) locked in which I feel like that would happen to you. (laughs) You would be the person like, oh, these bags are so unorganized. This isn't how you do this. Look, in my defense, there are physics involved. (laughs) And you need to take that into account. The other day, Owen and I were folding laundry. And he folds towels like he's doing it with his eyes closed. As long as they are smaller than when we started, he considers it full. (laughs) And... I am not somebody who's going to just like get on his ass about it for no reason. That's a complete lie. I am that person, but I wasn't in this case. I was sitting here like, who is she lying to? Right, right, right. I'm trying to be honest. But in this case, we have all of our towels piled up on top of this, like one of those over toilet, like cabinets. And if you don't, fold them so that they are even it's a big teetering stack that the towels Mm. all slide off of and you have to fold them in a way that they will sit on top of each other and be like steady Mm. and he acted like i was such a fucking maniac (laughs) i being like just fold them like this and then i'm like go try and put them up there go try and put all 11 of those towels folded like that on top of the toilet go ahead and very quickly realize like no yeah there's a reason for it so look i I care about the aesthetic but also he's not wrong the thing is in this episode is that later on when they let him out i am assuming they're about to leave that's all the luggage if nate is still loose enough inside that (laughs) that luggage area it doesn't matter how it's stacked because it's all going to slide around anyway. <laughs> he, had, he has it right to stop and make a moment about it if that was going to be packed to the gills and they needed to Tetris it to fit everything like you mm-hmm, do in mm-hmm. your overfilled refrigerator, for example. Which right, I'm sure Rashawn right. can't relate to it all because it's true, I get can. the feeling you don't have that happen. But- it's really not a problem for us. <laughs> <laughs> But you guys know what I'm talking about. Especially not in this economy. Oh, my God. <laughs> but even before this economy, it really was not one of our struggles. <laughs> so I love that when they open it, when they open the the, car- the luggage area uh, to retrieve Nate, bags fall out. Mm-hmm. Because him being in there is fucked up the whole thing. He has <laughs> so to shove him as- to get out. <laughs> they put him, like, right in front of him and blocked his way out. <laughs> I uh I don't I want to know how they found out he was in there. I because it's never explained. No. The, they just the, like start to roll episode, and then all of a sudden he jumps off and goes down there immediately straight to the luggage area. My head cannon is literally just they're all like doing like a seat check like little kids on a field trip. And someone notices that he's not on the bed and Ted is like that motherfucker is in the stowaway. Now, so uh, Ashley in the chat is like, oh, he probably just called or texted somebody. Hey, I'm in here. And that makes much more sense. <laughs> My headcanon is that 
he was pounding on the roof from the inside and, and they, they could started hear to get ready and then they were like what is that and then they realized he was down there i think it probably is just texting but i like the idea that he is just like <laughs> with a broom <laughs> on the ceiling like one of the neighbors below um so then we have this moment with ted where he is saying hi to his kid and telling him about how he's going to liverpool this little boy apparently does not know that many of the beetles are dead and i love this it's so he sweet. just can't bear it's... to tell him <laughs> Is a huge Beatles fan. I I really appreciated this little throwaway joke. Um, and then his <laughs> wife drops in. Yeah, and, and we... she's like, "I know this isn't easy, but did you get the paperwork the lawyer sent?" Yeah, and he sure does. And then the rest of the episode is him struggling to sign it. Yeah, yeah, which I really and... appreciated because, like, it was. A moment for him to you know it's one thing to say i'm gonna let you go and we need to move on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there's always going to be like moments like that where you suddenly go oh but this is really it though yeah you know and it becomes increasingly aggressive throughout the episode of like yeah. did you sign them yet have you signed it yet you know, mm -hmm. and then we get like when he loses his shit where it's like the lawyer is like hey did you sign it yet yeah <laughs> Um, she asked yeah. me to reach out. Yeah. Whenever somebody yeah. says they asked me to reach out, it's like, we were at wondering where the fuck you are. Pretty much is what it means. Yeah. <laughs> it felt weird to me because it's not clear how, like, how long he's had the paperwork before he was asked by her in this moment. Mm -hmm. It's sitting in its envelope still. I'm, I mean, maybe he's had it for like a week. Um, right. But... We the, get oh oh it, so weird... it gets so aggressive after only what seems like two days. Yeah, and I we was kind of like we get a weird sort of glimpse of how much time has passed in a very offhand way as they're loading up on the bus. He gets asked by two reporters some questions, right? Mm -hmm. And one of them mentions how many games have happened since Jamie Tart has been traded. Oh, I didn't and even I catch that. I okay. forget what exactly it is, but basically it's like they, they, I think uh, they haven't scored any goals. They lost like two and one was like a tie. So you get an idea. They've had like three, I think at least games since Jamie left, right? Gotcha. And figure like a game a week approximately. So it's been about three weeks, if not a month. You know, okay. Since that big thing. So it, I wonder um, about the paperwork then. If he's had it for a couple weeks, I could see. I keep blinking out on this camera. You, you do. That? Yeah, I'm seeing on. you like disappear. Every time you disappear, I like panic. But then you come right back. I'm like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I figured if just no one acknowledged it, then we would just be Yeah, fine. I probably shouldn't have said anything. I'm drawing the attention of, of whatever evil eye has been on me for tech <laughs> stuff the past like month. Um. Um. But yeah, and but he's yeah. like telling her, I have it right here. I'll look it all over, sign it. And she says, we'll be watching tomorrow. So I think that was the thing is that I we know the game is tomorrow. He just said, I'll look it over and sign it. And then the very next day, she's being very intense about it. Yeah. That feels kind of like what is why do you need it signed so immediately like this isn't something that like owen or owen brennan and i like really struggled with because by the time he was able to get a lawyer together to officially draw papers up shit was like long done you know yeah so i didn't have this sort of feeling of urgency other than like just i was going to get some money from us breaking up and i needed it because i was fucking broke but that was really the only thing and i'm like i don't know if that's what her situation is is that she's yeah. like in need of funds but she isn't saying that so i don't know it just seemed like maybe she's just afraid that he's not going to do it that was but my she knows away. that he's like traveling and that this is a big game so it just felt weird to be 
really aggressive during what she knows is going on because she says yeah. flat out we're going to be watching and she knows what's like i don't know it's weird i my uh my takeaway or at least my interpretation of this was um oh i hope you pop back up real quick there yep. you are <laughs> um is that because the, because the way the show chose to introduce michelle to us and how we see ted treat her and how she treats ted we have a certain amount of like built-in goodwill that the show is saying hey this woman's not terrible it's not her mm -hmm. fault she's not like a bitch or whatever it's just you know marriages yeah. don't always last forever and then to have her in this episode be really weirdly aggressive my my thought was she knows that this is not something that he that's going to be easy for him to do and that if left to his own devices he will not consciously like try to sabotage it but we'll just kind of put it off i put guess it it's just like put if you know off. it's going to be hard for somebody like give him a second yeah you know i mean i understand being afraid that he's going to be resistant but also come on like this is a big deal and he's yeah. in the middle of a massive moment yeah. here i don't know i don't know it just and, felt and like and that's Suspect. the thing, like, we don't ever get to really be so far in her brain. Even when we we met her last, you know, last time she when she was here, we don't really get to see what, because it's not her show, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we don't, we, we don't know really what's going on. And I think that's one of the things, too, is, like, even Ted is probably like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But never really expresses that to her. He's just like, yeah, yeah, I got it. I'll, mm -hmm. I'm going to take care of it. You know, he never actually says, like, what the fuck is the fire, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So then we go to the scene with Rebecca where she has gotten a happy anniversary email from some, like, flower company or something, um, which is such a real thing to get, like, notifications about shit that you set up. I had this with... Uh, some service that Brendan's mother signed me up for where I would get alerts about all of his family members' birthdays ew. beforehand. And I mean, so I didn't I mean, I didn't mean ew, it just came out. <laughs> and it, it's the kind of thing where I was like, I was fine with it because Brendan is so forgetful that I could see me. <laughs> Truly, it was beyond belief, guys. He had a wedding for his alleged closest friends that he was supposed to go to. And was at work because he forgot to schedule it off, forgot the wedding was happening and was at work and got a call from the girl that he was friends with being like, where are you? And he was like, what do you mean? Oh my that God. kind of forgetful, which is part That's of why worse than me. he did and not I'm work out. Bad. Yeah. The thing is, it is one thing to have that kind of issue, but he never actually wanted to like cope. There was no, he didn't put things in place to deal with it. When you know that you have done something of that magnitude, it is time to start taking putting shit into your calendar and auto like reminders and shit very seriously. And he had bought a present for his mother for Christmas. And this was like the year before I met him, forgot to wrap it. And on Christmas Day, had to run up to his room and just bring down this unwrapped item and hand it to God. her. <laughs> Because he just forgot to wrap it. He forgot my birthday one year. Just straight up forgot it. Uh, scheduled a work trip during Valentine's Day, the very first year we were together. <laughs> to Europe. For, it was an act. I take it back. It wasn't a work trip. It was a trip for fun to Europe alone. <laughs> while I was alone. No, this is Valentine's Day. Oh, oh my God. So just just for like an idea of the level oh. of not together. And yeah, if you know that you're like that, these kinds of emails will be like quite a thing. And I have this for, I had a lot of stuff I had to unsubscribe to right mm. after. Also, when you lose a family member mm. and then you start getting like Father's Day is coming up or shit like that. And you're like, cool, thanks. <laughs> Um, thanks 
I so wasn't she, in a ball crying, but right? thank you for that because I am now. Um, and this is when Keely comes in and fucks with her, like so she great. thinks that they're going to be like hooking up over this weekend, and that it's She's like, like a girlfriend why thing. Not, why not like blow off some steam and like <laughs> have some crazy sex with my new friend Rebecca? Rebecca's face the whole time. It's so great. I love when. <laughs> Finally, she says, I'm fucking with you. And Rebecca's like, oh, my God, can you imagine? I have. It's so Dead great. Serious. It's such a great Rebecca has no too. idea has how to, like, respond to that. <laughs> I don't either, to be perfectly then, honest. I mean, listen, Rebecca is everything that we have said on pretty much every podcast. I mean, mm-hmm. you could fucking climb that tree and see for miles, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, <laughs> But then Higgins comes in, <laughs> and this is such a cruel, like, bitchy, like, cunty thing that she mm-hmm. says to him. It is so awful, and it is stunning to me how we continue to round our way right back to being fully supportive of Rebecca and wanting nothing but good things for her, because she is so awful to him in this moment. Yeah. He comes in with his aviators. He's ready to fly in the jet. And he's not got only some is... like pin on, and I don't know if that's like to do with being a pilot or what. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even notice that. But, but it felt suspect to me. It might just be a team like, pin, you know, like but how funny would it be if it was one of those things the pilots give little kids when they fly that's and they give what them like, those wings or whatever? I of. <laughs> but I don't think it is, but yeah. I didn't get I got so mad one time when I I flew by myself when I was like eight to Georgia. People told me you'll you'll get wings. They never gave me wings. They, they never, never gave, gave them wings. to you. Nope. Uh, I was. Oh, it's a rich. It's a rich salty pennies, Marin. I never even got promised wings the first time I flew. I, I mean, I wasn't eight. I was like twelve or thirteen, but still a kid. Somebody should have offered me some goddamn wings. I mean, and I was alone. I didn't have anybody like yeah with me, me. So that yeah, right. So like that was supposed to be part of it. Is if you're by yourself, it's meant to be like a nice thing that they do. Nope. Mm-hmm lying liars <laughs> um but yeah she comes in and, or he comes in and he's got his fucking bag packed so she has oh, decided he's ready not because oh yeah this is a trip he makes you know and she tells him not only is he not coming and he's like oh well i'll ride the bus she's like yeah no you're not doing that either <laughs> i need you to stay here doing work that doesn't matter and then like, she leaves that shit is like like I I was crumpled inside. <laughs> it's one we're, of the meanest things. We're very different. You didn't I, crumple? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I was like, that's what you got. You had to know, man. Oh, it really was. Shit. Were mm-hmm. you really? Like, I think did? that your affection for him is based on the entirety of the show. And while I mm. find him fun. I don't care about him. Mm. I don't, I am not there at this point. So what happens to him based on the fact that he helped cover up the fact that his boss was cheating on her all the time and he can't even like recuse himself from her plans with Ted. I'm not mad at her for being salty about it. I'm just not. He knows what her goals are. He is aware how he wronged her and has just gone ahead and wronging her again. And I don't Mm. care if the wronging her is actually doing something that's sort of right. If I were her, this is how I would feel also. I just would. would, You know? All right. All right. So, yeah, that moment of her just being like, oh, no, you're not coming. I was like, this is probably better. Because I just feel like if you're not around him, it's going to be harder for you to make his life miserable. Maybe he should be grateful. I mean, he seemed like he was having a fantastic time with his family. And I feel like that is highly preferable to spending time with Rebecca. You know? So. <laughs> and it also gives him less chances to like fewer chances. Forgive me, Stannis. Um, to... <laughs> be put on the spot where he has to choose between her and Ted. 
So he should also be like a little bit grateful for that as well, because man, yeah. you don't know where you want to put your loyalty right now and you can be fired, sir. Yeah. So maybe it's, keep that in mind. It's very interesting to hear you say about that, say this about Higgins. Uh, and I get it too, because he has a sort of, uh, he is in league with Rebecca as far as like that's his employer and he should be following her lead and he is aware of her intentions and her motivations. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we watch Rebecca really swing, in my opinion, from one spectrum to the other, where she, in this episode is a really good example where she can display such compassion mm -hmm. and caring for Ted, even though she has been scheming nonstop for his downfall mm -hmm. <laughs> throughout the series. And I think we talked a little bit about a little bit about it before where it's because she sees them as two separate things. Yeah. Right. Like yep. in her brain, it doesn't seem like she understands that the scheming and the undermining to hurt Rupert is going to hurt Ted as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're like two separate things for her. So, uh, so, so, uh, Higgins gets a pass this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we have Ted going into the locker room and telling everybody, everybody like, Oh, who's psyched. And he just gets one single solitary <laughs> Danny. <laughs> From Danny in the background and points says thank you Danny and it turns out everybody is in the dumps because they haven't beaten this team for 60 years as Roy yeah. tells them yeah since uh Elvis had a number one hit uh it's now or never I think mm -hmm. the announcer says later on <laughs> and he turns my and has this little moment with beard where he's like what oh happened did Beyonce dump Jay-Z oh <laughs> And I love Beard puts a hand on his shoulder and says, no, not no. like that. And Ted is like, just even saying it out loud <laughs> made me immediately sad. It's so good. <laughs> Honestly, Beyonce dumping Jay-Z is the right thing to do. Listen, that's He doesn't deserve her. It's an entirely different podcast. But I understand people rooting for that couple. Yes, yes i get it but also like come on everybody yeah, knows yeah. <laughs> i feel I like really like who else was she gonna marry though like who else who else is there <laughs> she shouldn't she shouldn't get married she should have a stable of a rotating cast of 12 of the hottest men that somebody she hires can find like she'll have a casting director for her harem between you and me I choose to believe that's that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so she's married, but she's also got this right, other right. thing going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Like, it's, it's like it's like Jada and Will, but like done better because we don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true though. They're way more private, which I think is like the smart way to be if you're gonna be People, in the position they are. Not to I get sidetracked, but one of my favorite things about Beyonce, and I came to her very, very late. Like, you were a fan of her from, like, going back. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew her music. I knew Destiny's Child. I knew the big hits, but I wasn't, like, I didn't stand or whatever. I didn't start seeing it for Beyonce until Lemonade. But one of my favorite things is whenever she, like, she just dropped an album a couple weeks ago, which is fucking fire. I and haven't listened to it yet because I'm... I'm like, I have to be in the right headspace to just so fucking good. listen to. And I haven't it's been. So good. I've so heard. Good. Mm -hmm. So good. But like people talk so much about her and she never talks. Nope. Like she does very, very little press. Very little press compared to like people of her, like her stand, her station, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what the fuck's going on with her and her life, but they talk all the time. Like they know. And it just cracks me up. It cracks me up it's one I, of my favorite things the only thing that i ever was kind of like oh i sensed this was because i follow her on instagram and oh. there was a period of like eight or ten months before lemonade dropped and her posts were all so wistful and mm. sad and he wasn't in any of the photos and it was just a really 
the vibe was like melancholy even when she was in tropical places and stuff i was just sort of like this feels sad why does this feel so sad and then lemonade dropped and i was like oh oh okay (laughs) i get it now so not to say that i knew what was going on with her but it was just kind of like this feels weird and then realizing but yeah she is really smart for just pouring all of her energy into her actual work Mm -hmm. and i just want to try and like keep that energy myself but i am not the type to not we cannot talk? we can we just can't shut the fuck up <laughs> my whole job is talking so like how do you even do that and um i just i respect it but like part of that respect is just because it's so foreign a concept yeah, right. to me yeah <laughs> it just it's wild to me when in comparison to other folks but like i said that's a whole other podcast we should do mm-hmm, an mm-hmm. sober about beyonce oh, we um we after i listen to renaissance should. yeah I'll do. Um, I'll listen to Renaissance like <laughs> half an hour before, so that I can show to the cr- the crowd cast fucking crying. It's just all happy like dance music. Like it's just it's so great. Oh, it's good. Very very. It's very different from Lemonade. It's like house music, dance club music. Just like yeah. It's That's fun. I it's, guess it's makes sense with all of like the f- what it was it Vogue that she was doing those uh, shoots for where everything is covered in fucking glitter. Yes, and shit. <laughs> that was a hell of a thing. Um, um anyway right. so yeah roy tells them that they lose this uh they've been losing for 60 years against this team and i do appreciate that when he finishes his like speech about how you know we're gonna get it together there's no bigger cheer it everybody really is just sort of like, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> i was just like yeah that feels real <laughs> There's this, uh, this, it's, this, it's so silly, but there's like one little joke in here where, uh, you know, the, the goalie is out cause he's got a, a hamstring and they're like, His no, butt. you just tore your butt. Right. And it's yeah. a whole thing. And Beard crosses out hamstring and writes in <laughs> torn butt on the, like, the, the light board. <laughs> but then they're introducing a new goalie. And I'm not going to try to say his name, but his name is, it's like, he's from Montreal. So it's like French Canadian, kind of like, it's like Zoho. Or whatever. And he keeps he keeps seeing Zoro and Final Ted is like, I don't I don't see what I'm doing wrong here. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, Ted's saying, because I it's Zoro, right? That's what they're saying. <laughs> I like I always feel like if I say it quote correctly, is that like more embarrassing and cringy <laughs> as like a white American? Or yeah not like and i when i say correctly i'm putting it in quotes because like you know what i'm saying I know, and there's a joke from 30 rock where yes uh, exactly you know what i'm talking about right you know what i'm talking so mm-hmm. i don't even know if we want to fill in the kids but <laughs> but yeah she drops in and out of saying certain things with like a, an impeccable accent and yeah. it feels she, really fucking weird she does the whole like, thing is that she's got this really uh, ambiguous kind of right. Yeah. They don't know what she is, so she hits like an like a like a Chinese word perfectly, a Spanish mm-hmm. word perfectly, and then like a joke Jamaican accent, like just to like <laughs> throw one a thing, right? Yep. <laughs> but she does them all like impeccably, and it's like we just don't know what she is. <laughs> she's uh, good at imitating sounds, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps that's it. I always found that to be a thing for me with like imitating accents. I can imitate an accent and like repeat the words back sounding perfect. I can't, I don't know what they mean. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just imitating you, making the sound Mm. back at you. You know, that's all. Um, You have a good ear for stuff like that, which I do not have. (laughs) There was Um, some fucking post I saw somewhere that said names are so weird it's like what noise should I make to get your attention <laughs> and I was like ah, it is I guess just like what names are that basically is it right Ugh. Yep. that really puts it all in perspective doesn't it <laughs> so, so uh, he goes outside and he gets asked about relegation and really is just like yeah I'm very concerned about the definition of that word and I <laughs> didn't look it up but I don't know if I'm supposed to really know what it means by now. Like at this point, the the show will explain it. But it's they're not coming a for me because I don't know what relegation is. <laughs> it's, it's not the sound of the police. 
<laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, uh, in uh, in Premier League soccer, it's a and and, and I don't want to get into it because the show is going to like do a whole thing. But really, it just they have a thing where it's a little bit different than ours. It's actually very different than ours, where uh, there are different sort of levels of status of the professional teams, right? So, like mm-hmm. here, we just have pro sports, like your NBA, you know, NFL, whatever. Right. Or maybe minor league for, like, hockey and baseball. Okay. But uh, there, you have, like, Premier League, which is where uh, Richmond is right now. And then there's a league sort of below that. It's still professional soccer, right? But it's not okay. Premier League, right? So if you don't do well, you get re- regulated. Relegated. 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 And you sort of you sort of drop down to like a less prestigious but still professional level gotcha. of um league that you play in. Okay. Which is very, very bizarre. It's really weird to imagine how we if we would do that here in the US. It's just, like, I, I can't even, think I we can't do. even imagine. We just don't admit it. Like we're not open about it and it's not official, but Come on. <laughs> like, there are certain teams that you hear their name and you're like, oh, I didn't know that state had a team because they just don't matter, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, so we have like unofficial shade and it's just very, very official over there. Exactly. They were just like, no, no, no. We're going to be able to be mean with documentation. So, um, so, uh, this, uh, they get, into Liverpool and they check into the hotel and this bit with Keely and Rebecca as the bellhop is like dropping off their luggage and shit. Oh, the it's most so awkward cool. thing. The bellhop, <laughs> as somebody who was a bellhop, it's a real weird vibe to be like in the room with people mm-hmm. and having to show them how to do things sometimes. Like tr- if we have like, we had weird spa bathtubs that had strange settings and stuff. So I was supposed to show them because otherwise they would call the front desk Mm -hmm. and demand like an immediate explanation or somebody to come up again and show them. And it's just a weird thing to be in a room with the door closed, people that you don't know in a place that they're supposed to sleep. It just feels weird. You know, it's the worst. It's yeah. absolutely the worst. I hate it going up to guest rooms. Mm-hmm. And usually I wouldn't have to, I would meet them at the door, but there would be occasions where I'd have to go into the room with them. And it's just never good. It's I had to set up good. room service sometimes. And <sighs> that's the worst one. You have to bring the whole trolley with all their shit up there. They're just hanging around watching you clear a table, mm. put a cloth down, set everything up. God forbid you forgot something, but that didn't happen <laughs> too often because we were pretty on top of it. And it was just this awkward, a lot of times they were just in robes and it was clear that they had just been in the bath. So they're like almost naked. They have a robe and it's that's it. It's this weird intimacy where you really shouldn't be there for it, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's something about being in the hotel room, the sort of veneer that exists between, like, strangers evaporates. Like, yep. to your point, they're very comfortable in a robe, maybe just a towel. Yeah. I yeah. never liked it. Never, ever and liked it. You have it. to figure out small talk. And small talk is death. I swear to God. So, yeah. hated it. So, Keely is just like, I'm just going to let him imagine us fucking and it's going to be a tip that lasts a lifetime and she is not wrong (laughs) i swear to god i didn't even realize what was happening there because it's it it, like it's so sudden that she sort of cuts him off Mm. that when he just goes i better be going i was like (laughs) oh i see um Everybody what she says, we, my lady and I want to have a quick shag and a shower before we hit the town tonight. <laughs> and welcome to Liverpool as he just ducks out. Bless him. And then um, like, right after this fantastic moment of, you know, sort of like comedy, we have a really like vulnerable moment where Rebecca mm-hmm. shares like being overwhelmed in this room on this date. You know, mm-hmm. and Keely just goes in for a huge hug because that's who she is. Yep. And yep. Rebecca both appreciates it and also mentions this hug is going on for quite some time. <laughs> Can we there... please be done now? <laughs> last week, I don't know if Candace listens to this, but last week 
Candace had a really bad week and basically texted me about how she had gone and bought a bunch of sopapillas and was just driving around eating them and crying. Aww. And I was like, on the next, on the day after I had the car for the day. So I started driving down and was like, I, I texted her, Hey, um, I'm going to be there in about an hour. You better get dressed. And she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, we're going to go to Barnes and Noble. And she says, there was like Aww. a minute. And then she texts back and she's like, all right, but I have to be home by three 30. And I got to her house to pick her up and she wanted to show me a piece of furniture she had put together and stuff. And then I was like sitting on the end of her bed and I padded next to me for her to come sit down. And she stood back and went, what? And I, <laughs> I said, I'm going to hug you. Because you had a breakdown the other day. And she said, I did have a breakdown. Okay. And she sat and like <laughs> hugged me for like two minutes. And I was like, okay, now we're done. We're done with that. And we went and had lunch. And she paid for it. And I started to be like, but I, and she goes, no, you made me hug you. You owe me. I'm paying for <laughs> So uh, anyway, yeah, very relatable mm-hmm. moment there. That's really funny. I miss Candace. I need to hop into Discord all for all kinds of reasons, but I also miss Candace. Yeah. She's a so, she's a good time. <laughs> she's a good time if you know how to to handle a personality like that, which is very much like mine. um so then we go to nate who is uh giving everybody their room cards and telling them that they can't put the furniture outside in the hall or by the pool or or have it shipped to other hotels which i am desperate to know what happened there it's it's very pointed like he's looking isaac like right in the fucking face so (laughs) what i'm gonna imagine backstory is that they were gonna go to a hotel that had bad beds and one of them was like, I'm going to need that mattress from the Four Seasons, though, because I am not fucking around with, like, a Motel 6 mattress, thanks. Some poor sap at the front desk at Motel 6 had to sign off on receiving a mattress. <laughs> and then we go to this fucking scene of Rebecca making, like, plans for the evening while Mm -hmm. keely is in the other room and we get introduced to the running joke of the episode which i thought was just delightful this is a really reveal of it it's so the reveal is so good so we get rebecca on the phone and she's like calling to make reservations and she yells like you know what do you want to eat tonight or something (laughs) and we hear keely's voice (laughs) and she's rebecca's like oh steakhouse that sounds great (laughs) it's great steak i can do steak yeah, when we finally see Keely, <laughs> she her hair, they have really done some shit to her hair a couple times in this show so far, and I want to know who hurt these people. Because she's got like the crimped it's hair. It's crimped. It, remember the, the, like, the flat iron with the crimped plates in it that you would use to do that? I remember that. Even when I was in high school, we I had one of those. I, I wanted didn't have hair one. for it, but I had one. I wanted and, one, but no, I was not allowed to like use hot tongs oh, and things for my hair. They oh, wouldn't let me. Yeah. Kaylee's face as she's watching this and her line is, I don't even remember doing this. I can't get over. Is that supposed to be that it's it was recorded so long ago that crimping was still in style or is crimping I think coming back that's my question is crimping coming back because i feel like it's gonna be coming back it probably will considering the the, the way trends are heading i'm sure mm. it's gonna be back but i think the joke with keely is that it's like partially like it's dated but mm-hmm. also that this was at a time in her life career or whatever where she may have been a little bit more basic air quotes than like okay. her image ended up becoming you know gotcha. so that it's just all together embarrassing you know it's dated like she's also her wearing outfit like, right like the whole thing is like Ugh. i don't know where keely is supposed to be from but this feels very like 
like towny, you know, very like <laughs> local, like small town shit, mm-hmm. you know. Oh and my then god! You, move, mm-hmm. you know, you you leave Liverpool and you go to London, and now like you're in like a bigger, more metropolitan, more sophisticated, you know, area, right? Oh and, man! <laughs> and she is just like she's just so embarrassed and. And 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 it's and it's in everybody's room. Like everybody is like, there's nothing she could do about it. It's just I loved this because <laughs> she is so ruthless with fucking around with Roy, which she should be. He needs it. But it was nice for him to have something to make fun of her for. But he's like, I keep seeing you in your crazy hair. I love it. <laughs> and they like she did that vodka commercial or whatever it was for. And her hair basically looked like this. Like, it was just like really teased out real it was big. Awful. And it was low key crimped. Yeah. But uh, so this episode introduces us to a, a new person. Mm-hmm. Sassy Smurf. Sassy and Smurf. And yes, I did get on the internet and correct a lot of people at the time because there was a Sassy Smurf. I will not bore you all with the details on this podcast, but. <laughs> there was I don't know how smurf. many people listening to this are aware, but Rashawn has like a whole Smurf thing. I really do. You guys have been you guys have been around. You guys know. I like it. I'm real serious about my Smurf shit. <laughs> I take it real, real serious. <laughs> Such a weird thing. I always but... forget about it, and Owen is the one who brings it up. I don't know why he in particular <laughs> always remembers. But he'll say something like, oh, God, I found this Smurfs meme I have to send to Rashawn. And I always go, why? Oh, yeah. Okay. So. I love them so much. <laughs> I just love them so much. So weird. But anyway, I so when we meet Sassy Smurf, uh, what, what, what did you think? Like, I, I have some feelings about how this plays out and, and why I loved it so much. But. What did you think when you when when she first pops up? Did you were you worried about how this was going to impact uh, Rebecca and Keeley's like burgeoning friendship, or were you like did you have any- no? I was sort of wondering because she shows up, she isn't greeted by Rebecca when she walks in, so it almost felt like she's somebody that maybe Rebecca didn't want here or didn't want to see. But then Rebecca doesn't do the whole, like, what are you doing here? She just rolls with it. So I was really trying to take a cue from how Rebecca was reacting, and she wasn't reacting in a way I understood at all. So I just had to sort of sit back and, like, let it play out. The only thing that I was, like, concerned about at first, the way that she says, hello, stinky, and she seems to be, like, (laughs) mocking her. I thought maybe this was going to turn out to be, like, a sister who kind of like gloats over Rebecca being in a bad place somehow, you know, Mm -hmm. like a a competitive sibling somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you really quickly realize like, that's not quite what's going on. And then when she's like, Oh, who's this? Is this your concubine? Is she Russian? (laughs) And I was like, okay, I'm feeling it. And that actually, and then when (laughs) Keely is like, I love you. Who are you? I was like, yeah, that seems right. (laughs) <laughs> because her entire vibe is some is like the, she stole champagne off of a room service cart in the hallway, which was theirs anyway. Right, right. I love that. I love it so much. <laughs> she steals their own champagne. It's like, look what I got. <laughs> I like she is somebody that Rebecca really needs in her life. And mm. it makes a lot of sense finding out that Rebecca sort of pulled away from her with everything that was going on because right she's the kind of person that's gonna like tell you your shit and yep. rebecca was not in a place where she wanted to hear it and yep. that's well, we have that what moment we do later on when she absolutely calls rebecca out on her bo- in the midst of rebecca's apology right mm-hmm, rebecca mm-hmm. later towards the end rebecca's apologizing but she's doing this sort of apology where she's not really taking accountability for her part yeah. And and um Flo Sassy is like, oh no no no, I'm gonna call you out in real time. Mm-hmm. You know. But uh I remember there was sort of talk and I remember thinking myself, 
uh, a lot of times in shows when you introduce uh, an additional female to a dynamic that's already like starting to grow it's like we can't imagine anything other than competition I know. know. Yeah. Is, is one is like Healy going to feel threatened or is Sassy going to feel threatened or, you know, like Mm -hmm. can these three women all like be cool. And so often TV shows are like, no, they can't, you know, it's barely a stretch to have two be like, okay, we can't have three. Yeah. And the show was like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. That's like, we're not and doing that. <laughs> if anything, who she is makes it make so much more sense why she gets along really well with Keely, because they are very similar in their mm-hmm. openness and their immediate mm-hmm. honesty. And they, the idea that Keely would be Rebecca's very first friend like this, that wouldn't really work because. Right she wouldn't handle it so well and roll with it so right. easily. So it's, right. it makes it like all kind of click into place that, Oh, she knew somebody very much like this and probably was drawn to her because Keely mm-hmm. reminded her of somebody else that she cares about and sort of left in the dust as it turns out. I, we've talked in the previous episodes about Keely dealing with Jamie's like the girl when he brings Bex to the, to the gala. And then mm-hmm. when she shows up at Jamie's house and there's a different girl who spent the night with them and they don't do the sort of typical thing between the women and, and keep it very focused on the fact that I don't have a beef with you. Mm-hmm. My situation is with, with Jamie here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sassy when Keely like in finally hugs her and introduces herself and Sassy's like, my husband used to beat off to you. Mer- like, I know who you are, but it's oh not God. in like that could have been done so differently. And we've yeah. seen that so many times, right? Mm-hmm. Where the sort of older woman is going to be shitty and resentful and mean to the younger woman because my husband used to jerk off to you. Mm-hmm. And that just isn't part of this, you know? Yeah. I just, I loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. And I love Keely just like immediately just being like, oh, you're delightful. Oh boy. Like she has this <laughs> excitement about her because I could see in her position, knowing what Rebecca is going through because of the day and everything, mm-hmm. it feeling like kind of a lot of pressure to keep her cheerful and keep things upbeat. But now you've got somebody who's going to be able to help with that. And who knows right. Rebecca, if anything, a lot better than you do. And yeah. so there's a, an aspect also of like, oh, we've got somebody in support, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's also a really funny, like, little throwaway joke where fucking uh, uh, Sassy is like, oh, so you, you heard about the divorce because they haven't talked in six years, we find out. Mm-hmm. And Rebecca is like, yeah, I ran into your ex-husband. He hit on me and then told me that you got divorced. And Sassy's like, that's a really weird order. You think he would have? <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's just like a really quick sort of like, oh, you married to an asshole. I married an asshole. What are you going to do? It happened. <laughs> I can't imagine being with somebody who just like turns out to hit on everybody. I just can't. I don't know. Like, I I don't think I've ever been cheated on and maybe I have, but I don't know about it. That's what and I always say. I have no idea how I would react to it because sometimes I think I would just immediately go cold and just be like, well, fuck you then. And sometimes yeah. I'm like, maybe I would break their windshield with a mm. bat like Beyonce. Yeah. It could really um, go either way. It really could. I don't and know either. I'm, Finding out that, like, somebody's been doing it consistently and with, like, people who are your friends. I can't imagine the sort of betrayal that would come with that. You know, I've been very lucky in the same way that I don't know what it is to be cheated on. If I have ever been, I've never found out about it. And Mm -hmm. ignorance is bliss, right? That's just not a particular struggle I've had to deal with. But the sort of, like, violation and and betrayal of trust on that level it just you know and Mm -hmm. to be married for x amount of years and to like to your point find out that there are people even like higgins right people you see every day who are who are withholding that truth from you yeah you know and the way that must make you basically feel like you can't trust anyone 
Like mm-hmm. you can't trust anyone to tell you the truth. You can't trust anyone to have your best interest at heart, you know, and how that would just really warp how you engage with the world around you. Which is why I'm not mad at her for leaving him behind the way she did. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Erica mentioned in the chat that there's a, something about this scene because Rebecca is in uh, not in her high heels. So this scene, we have her sort of, you know, not as statuesque and towering over everybody. And it just brings a sort of, I don't and know. And she's in a robe as well. So she's not mm-hmm. like all, not that she's not still very put together in yeah, this robe. But she's not she like is. armored. She really is all the time, right? Her mm-hmm. arms are fucking ridiculous. But yeah, there's just like this sort of armor that she wears is missing in this It makes scene, me so really mad. Like that, too. that robe, you, it's open at the neck. Her skin, I mean, I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> She just must like use a lot of SPF and just be like, really... <laughs> but it's well, she's just... also drop dead gorgeous. And so she's got that going for her. <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, like my neck, you guys sort of wrink wrinkles like in this one spot and leaves a ring because no, it like tans, it folds right where, <laughs> so there's like a tan line from the fold in my neck. It's not hot. <laughs> It's just not the best. I don't love it. I, I'm i not going to bore you guys, but, like, me and my neck have been through a lot together. And I don't have, like, the goiter anymore. So I'm just, like, as long as I don't have that. I oh, like I forgot I'm that you had to deal with that. Yeah, thyroid situation. It's Protect no your neck. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So it's the night before the big game. Uh. Ted has a moment where he's talking to the team and he's like, all right, we're going to meet and we're going to either watch movie night or we're going to have a pillow fight and everybody votes for movie night. And Ted is like, I'm telling you just one time with the pillow fight and you'll never watch a movie again. Uh, I'm really looking was- forward to seeing a pillow fight. I really hope we get that. <laughs> I I've like never right, enjoyed though, pillow like, fights like, because people go for the face. And I think that's like do. against the rules. They really, this is why, uh, pillow fights with brothers because they will they, it's all about smacking you in the face and it's yep. really not the spirit of the pillow no. fight right it's also the thing but, with uh, uh, snowball fights people pack ice into a snowball and then things mm-hmm. like really cute that they fucking like cut you with their snowball yeah. also brothers yeah. yeah I never had brothers but I had like neighborhood shitty kids and that's as close as I got yeah yeah meh 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 yeah meh. yeah <laughs> Um, but they watch the Iron Giant, and I can't wait to watch this episode with Owen because that is one movie that oh he God. always, whenever he says Superman, that is guaranteed Aww. sobbing. And they have the Superman moment, and all of them sobbing, and like that is try. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, <laughs> he, I, I, Owen doesn't cry, like he does, but it's just Brendan was a real crier. To oh, the point really? where it was almost like, okay, you're kind of weaponizing it now. Tone it down. I can't even have <laughs> oh a fucking goodness. conversation with you. You know, like he cried really easy. And oh. Owen, it's a lot harder to get him to cry. And like, he doesn't, it's not like the sobbing. It's just sort of a like choked up red eyes thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When we watched this together the first time, I had never seen it. Oh, man. I was it's, just so thrown because I had never seen him that emotional in that way, you know? It'll get you. That that movie in particular will get you. And it will get the people who don't cry also. It is fucking dangerous. <laughs> and the close-up of all of the men trying, like, not to cry mm-hmm. is so great. Isaac's face in particular. There's a bit where somebody is texting and Isaac is like, don't I love it. Isaac is it. like nudges him and says no, and then the camera focuses on Roy, who had mm-hmm. clearly been eyeballing that dude <laughs> yep, and was yep. thinking to say something and kind of relaxes when he sees that yep. Isaac took care of it. And I love that <laughs> moment of just like, yeah, that's fucking right. You better keep your fucking eyes on yeah. the screen. <laughs> There's a couple of really spectacular Roy moments that are like occurring in the background throughout this episode as well. Um so <laughs> Nate. <laughs> Ted is trying to get some advice for the game tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And he asked Nate, and Nate has ideas clearly, 
but mm-hmm. can't bring himself to say them. And when Ted is like, what's the worst thing could happen? Nate sang the song of my people. Oh my God. <laughs> he went from zero to a hundred so fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you won't like my idea and it makes you hate me. Then you fire me. Then I have to move back in with my parents and they'll be ashamed of me. <laughs> then everyone finds out back home and laughs at me until my face melts off. Excuse me. And he gets up and leaves. And he runs away. He just fucking bails. And Beard is like, well, at least he didn't stammer. <laughs> My favorite part of this is how I had just been saying in like two or three episodes ago, follow the thought about what you're so worried can happen. Mm-hmm. Like if you're if you're like, well, what's the worst that can happen? If you follow it, it will be ridiculous shit like that. <laughs> that you think that if I do this thing right now, it will lead to everlasting shame, loss of face for my family. My father shall turn away from me. And I shall be like, the the sun will be dark in my eyes. And then you suddenly have to stop and go, wow, I really like, like, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I had a a long time ago, a not a podcast. (laughs) No, a blog um, called the unlikely triathlete, where I shared training to do a sprint triathlon for the first time. And uh, as the date was getting closer and closer to the triathlon, I was getting more and more freaked out. And I finally did a post about like, just imagining the worst possible scenarios for a bunch of things. And most of them were like, I break a leg or like do something really terrible to injure myself. Or I come in dead last. I came in second to last. No <laughs> joke. I wasn't dead last. But it wasn't last. <laughs> but they had started dissembling the stations by the time I got to the end. But I fucking finished. Um, just all, and I had so many people because the, the whole thing was like an exercise in just sort of what is it you're really afraid of? And I got so many compliment or compliments comments from people who were like. I can't believe you're worried about breaking your leg. That's not going to happen. This is a fucking sprint. It's nothing. And I was like, I know. That's That's why I did it. You (laughs) idiot. Like people are people who are into triathlon. Some of them are the most self-important uptight bitches. I wore a pink plastic cape that I made from a tablecloth i got at party city for the run portion for fun (laughs) because that's how i roll and i had people leaving comments about how i had ruined this is a direct quote the quote dignity of sacrifice unquote (laughs) of the other athletes who had put it all out there to be there wow like Wow. If me wearing this affects you that much, how do the you not dignity. see that as a you problem? Like, genuinely. The dignity, and the the sacrifice. dignity of sacrifice. <laughs> Holy the, shit. It was just truly Holy over the top. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. This is why I don't run. <laughs> this is not why, but I'm going to add to the list. <laughs> She's got a torn butt. That's why. <laughs> um. But yeah, so he bails and then we go to dinner with the girls having a delightful time. A great time. And Sassy sort of like hits on the waiter on Rebecca's behalf. As all good girlfriends do. (laughs) I have never done this, I don't think. No, never been a wingman, wing girl, wing lady. Not like this. (laughs) I don't know. It's so interesting because like I think about it and so little of the time did I go out with friends who were single and like looking. Mm. I tended to have friends that were either in relationships or we were going out and they weren't really interested in a total stranger, you know? Oh, yeah. So it didn't come up really. I've done this. I've had it done for me and I've done it for others. (laughs) Bless them. Uh, My favorite bit is when Rebecca excuses herself and 
we have Sassy talking to Keely, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and we find out, uh, when we find out the nickname, uh, yep. Sassy calls uh, Rebecca Stinky because Rebecca shows up in their town and she's gorgeous and she's tall and she's got great boobs and she's rich. So Sassy decides the way to deal with that shit is tell everybody her name is Stinky, which, you know what? Yes. yes. Makes sense. <laughs> and then... Uh, Keely does something really sweet, you know, and like toast to Rebecca. Mm-hmm. And Sassy is like, that's, that's not, not Rebecca. Rebecca. You yeah. haven't met her yet. Um, and it's a real nice sort of like this woman that you like, who's great, is not mm-hmm. even close to what the real woman is. You know, this this one yeah. is cold and, you know, not silly and not fun. You know, she's not really her. And I think that that is what Sassy is telling us explicitly here is what we've already kind of gathered as the audience, right? In these mm-hmm. moments, these quiet moments with Rebecca. And that, and that is why we continue to root for her, even though she has been like conniving and undermining and sabotaging and like a bitch mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. But we finally get some sort of external confirmation that, yeah, there's something else. There's someone else underneath all of this yeah yeah and i like that as well because like you know i had said last episode i think you're better than this and you know you're better than this and that's part of where i feel like some of the coldness comes from is her purposely trying to shut off the part of herself that knows she's better than this Mm. because that's something that you have to do if you're trying to fuck with a person and you have a conscience You have to figure out a way to cope with your conscience and just disconnecting from it is like a tried Mm -hmm. and true method. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't like usually actually work permanently and you have to deal with that shit eventually. But sometimes it works in a way that's genuinely scary. I'm just listening to a lot of snapped women who kill episodes lately <laughs> and there are some women out there that i think they never thought they would be in the position where they were suddenly on their third murder but that <laughs> happened Oops. because they just turned it off and it just never went back on again um mm, but yeah this murder. is <laughs> she's on her third murder titled my next album <laughs> um so then we go to sassy walking away and she walks past ted at the yeah. front desk who Look i love our that fax he, machine. he is talking to the concierge who's on the phone with somebody and just he just says i can't just flush it again but harder <laughs> and then it's like very good and hangs up and i was just like man if that isn't like half the job of working at the front desk oh my. i like i got like i was low-key triggered Mm-hmm. But this whole episode, this whole episode was just like, oh, that's right. I did that for like almost 10 years. <laughs> and the search for a fax machine when you're going through a divorce, I went through this. Because Is that real? It's like, it's not that nobody has them anymore. It's that they're all weirdly gate kept by like the parties. who And, and if you have to fax something and God forbid you have to go back again. It's like a whole thing, of, like to send one sheet, and you have to make a special <laughs> trip to like Kinkos for this one paper. It was, it just felt ridiculous, you know. So, thankfully, the uh, lawyer eventually tells him you can just take a photo and send them, which is how I right, did right. it. Yeah, I yeah. took photos, and then <laughs> nowadays you can just send the actual photo. But back then. You had to take a photo and then there was an app that you would download that would still send it to the number of a fax machine. Oh, ew. So you were like, mm. you had to get an app that talked to a phone line Gross. and it would send the thing. It was too much. So now we just do photos. Thank the Lord. But he has a am- moment here of this guy just like laughing at him and having to cover his mouth and be like, oh, you're serious. My bad. Sassy comes and she's like, are you trying to like fax something to 1997? Mm-hmm. It is boggles my mind how many faxes we get at the bank. We get faxes There's still very all, much a thing. All day. Yeah. And I don't understand why anyone is using them still. It mm-hmm. just makes no sense to me. But yeah, all day long faxes come through. And uh, it's ridiculous. It's and such I a waste like, of paper. We don't need to be doing this anymore, guys. Like, I feel like if you fax it to us, 
that is you, Loki, saying you don't care about the answer. Right? Because if you cared, you would have used a better method of communication. Mm-hmm. So why am I? There's no sense of urgency. Yep. Uh, but Sassy rolls up and then this, she has like a, like a little bit of banter with Ted and whatever. And then Ted leaves. And then the, the clerk is just like, you know, well, can I help you? <laughs> She's like, well, I was gonna smoke, and then I was gonna like hit on this this handsome Marlboro man guy, but I kind of fucked it. And the guy starts to be like, well, I get off at ten, and she just walks. Away. She just walks away. I love that he says something like, "You nope, you wouldn't. Why would you? Why and would that, you? Why would not. you killed me a little bit? Why? Like just a sad face, and he's like not a bad looking guy." No, but, it's uh, fine, right? No, but, no. You know, but also, like, he understands his place in the world. <laughs> He's got a little silver, like, in the front of his hair that I was like, oh, that looks nice. Like, well done. <laughs> but, yeah. And her calling Ted the Marlboro Man. No. Absolutely. No? No. <laughs> no. I feel, like... I- I give her a pass because I, I as as a someone in the UK, I feel like they don't have the like sort of like particular nuance of what the Marble Man is. Yeah. So she just sees because she also calls him Magnum PI. So there's just sort of right, like true. American mustache, like Midwest accent. I know two things. <laughs> That's fair. You know? Yeah. Um. So this is when we cut to all the men crying and then we go that then comes the scene where they talk about Rebecca and who she really is. And then we go to emo Ted who uh, is beavering it up with his hair. He's had a few drinks. We see some like empty mini bottles as he sits down and he gets the text uh, she asked me to reach out. Good news. You can just take a photo and si- send it to my office. Thanks. Mm-hmm. I love this sender is not in your contact list. There's yeah, something yeah, about right? that that for me was just like, yeah, I fucking <laughs> bet. Hasn't talked to this man one time. Um, And he's sitting there and there's this weird swishing sound. And he looks over. And there is somebody shoving a paper under his door and then pulling it out again and then shoving it under again and pulling it out again. And he loses his temper and goes and finds Nate kneeling on the floor in front of his door. Yeah. With his thoughts. And And Ted bites his head off. Thankfully apologizes the next day. But Nate just doesn't, you know, he could not have picked a worse time. (laughs) yeah it's a weird thing to see our ted in this react this way Mm -hmm. and be this kind of like this you know sort of cruel uh in even though we all understand like we know where his head at we know he's been drinking we know he's got this thing going on with his ex-wife and his ex-wife's lawyer but still to see him jump at nate that way yeah and after seeing him be so encouraging and like begging Nate to share this, you know, yep. it's, it's, it's a rough moment. And I really appreciate that when he goes and apologizes to him, Nate says like, are you okay? Like Nate knows well enough that he isn't like this yeah. to be like something's up. And he knows part, like what's going on apparently, because all Beard had to say was Michelle mm-hmm, and immediately mm-hmm. he knew. So, I'm not sure if he's that aware of what exactly was happening, but you know, he's not taking it as personally as he could. And I really yeah, do yeah. appreciate that. And also uh, there's something about apologizing right away in a real way and taking responsibility for what you did. That goes a long way. You know, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. It, so often it takes us a little while to like roll back around to. Yeah be like taking full accountability for how we behave badly you know mm-hmm. um but ted is like on that shit the next day like oh i fucked up last night that was out of line yeah. I, you didn't deserve that and i apologize and do you forgive me um and when someone does it that way and they have a history of being like good to you it is really easy to be like you know what yeah mm-hmm. yeah i do exactly so he says to nate all of this is really good and they need to hear it but I'm not going to do it. You're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And he just what shoves is- Nate on stage with a mic with feedback 
as the audience coughs and sort of shuffles around. And what did you think? Nate is going to pee his <laughs> pants. So here's my thing. None of this felt like how Nate talks. So that was my main issue is that we have never seen Nate use language like he does here. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I was kind of like, wait, is that he wrote this? Because I don't know if that's supposed to be part of the joke, but it just felt so aggressive. Mm-hmm. And we've never seen this side of him at all. And it felt like he was reading somebody else's words. It didn't feel like it was coming from Nate. And I know it is supposed to have been, but, and I think maybe that's supposed to be part of the point is that he would never actually like say this, but I also have a hard time believing he would write this down and give it to Ted. Mm. You know what I mean? I do. It's, it's a, it's a thing where like you, you meet someone and you get, you sort of decide who they are based on how they act, which is all any of us can do. Mm -hmm. Right. But that doesn't mean we know the person, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I love the reaction of fucking. I love the reaction of the whole team. Mm-hmm. At first, they're all just like really supportive, like "Go ahead, Nate. What do you got to say? Go ahead." There's the yep. Isaac, right? It's like, "Go ahead, go ahead. Everybody, be quiet. Nate's got something to say." <laughs> and then he starts, and they're just like, "The fuck." I love that so much. The immediate turnaround. What did you say to me? But what happens is that every time that he like gets really aggro, the team is agreeing. And so whoever is on the receiving end of this has to kind of look around and be like, oh, everybody is saying this, I guess. And that for me, have you ever been in this position? Where you wanted to get defensive and then everybody started agreeing and you were sort of like, oh, wait. yeah, <laughs> there is nothing like the feeling of everybody apparently having had a fucking conference <laughs> and you're unaware, you know, there's a moment where Danny is just like tough, but fair. I love that. <laughs> He says Isaac is playing like a big dumb pussy. And then (laughs) essentially there's ways to be intimidating without getting physical. Mm -hmm. Um, Tells Colin that like, do you wax your pubes? Why are you playing like a fucking Brazilian? Tells Sam he's like the only other African that spends more time in prison in his own head is Mandela or something like that. (laughs) And Everybody in the in in the team is sort of like getting into the roasting, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's really funny, and oh, I can't believe he said that. No, that's kind of true, you know. And then he has to talk to Roy. <laughs> Roy doesn't want to be a good sport about this. He, at first, I thought he was trying to be like, I want to make a point that I can take it. But it really felt like he wanted to see if he was going to be able to do it, Mm -hmm. you know? And he is. Nate, like, makes eye contact even Mm -hmm. as he's saying Mm -hmm. this, which I wasn't really sure if he would be able to manage it. But he says, you're old and your reaction times are a little off and your focus drifts around. But none of that was even what made you such a good player. So it wouldn't matter. Except that your anger seems to be gone or you're Mm -hmm. doing something with it. And you're not putting it out there the way you were anymore. You used to run like you were mad at the grass and kick the ball like you caught it fucking your wife or something like that. I love that. (laughs) Yep. I'm afraid of what it's going to do to you if you just keep it all to yourself. And when he's telling Roy this, there's a couple of cutaways to Ted and Beard as they're watching this interaction with Mm -hmm. me and Roy. And Roy is 
like daring Nate to say it to his face, but not in a like, I'll beat your ass, but kind of in a like, can you really step into this role? Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Because when, when Ted reads the things that Nate has to say, Ted agrees that they're all things that need to be said. Mm -hmm. Now I've never played in, in like any organized sports or whatever, but movies have shown me that it's very common for a coach to go in and just sort of like rip the team to shreds in a way to like build them up. Mm -hmm. So my assumption is this sort of talking to is supposed to be sort of like part of the deal. Right. Yeah. I think it's just meant to be like, you don't think I notice what's going on out there, but I can see. And again, I liked this moment for Nate's growth, but I just didn't really buy it because mm. I haven't seen the side of Nate and this being the first time I ever see it felt like it was really out of nowhere. Mm. If, if we had seen him sort of like making comments to Ted on the sidelines, like he is playing like a big dumb pussy today. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. And like it <laughs> slipped out, but he apologized and he like, then I would know that was like in there at all, but mm. it just, is the first time we've ever heard anything like this coming from him. And so that was what kept, he gets to a point where he's like, Oh, you think that's funny, Sam? And there's an energy to it that just felt like a stand-up comedian Mm -hmm. and it just didn't suit. So this scene just didn't quite work for me the way I think that they wanted it to. And I am always team Nate and I like, I'm all for him coming into himself and the team taking him more seriously. And I'm all mm-hmm. for it, but this just didn't quite hit for me, you know? Yeah. It's definitely a departure from what we have seen of Nate, right? It definitely doesn't seem like it gels with the sort of like, I don't want to call him mild mannered, but sort of like unable to really say what's on his mind, kind mm-hmm. of like double like uh, second guesses himself before he even gets the words out of his mouth, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And that he has sort of been uh, shrinking himself Mm -hmm. or someone shrunk him before we met him. Right. Mm -hmm. He seems like he's a really small sort of compact kind of guy, you know, that doesn't want to like, that fits in the luggage space. Mm -hmm. That fits in the luggage hole. Right. Uh, So they go out. They're all wait, fired up. Wait. Oh. Don't Sorry. forget about Roy, who literally rips <laughs> one of the fucking benches out of the floor that's like riveted in place based on the way the hardware goes flying, I think. It's it's pretty good, right? It's I cannot good. express to you guys the level of concern I have <laughs> recently begun to feel at how I respond to angry men. It's truly <laughs> not okay. I have... A lot to work on in that area, apparently. Because so, he just yanks this bench up and I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just, I it's... hate it for myself. <laughs> there is a scene. Have you ever seen LA Confidential? I have, but not in many years. Russell Crowe is a kid, like he, as a kid, saw his mom get like beat up or something repeatedly and was very defensive of her and so growing older he becomes like extremely hyper protective of women Mm -hmm. and he is involved in the questioning of a suspect involved in a rape case and he is in the room listening through the double glass and he's like leaning on the back of a chair listening to this guy testifying about what he did and you see his hands and all of a sudden the wooden chair back just shatters and he yanks the door open and goes in and begins to beat the shit out of the guy. Oh, right, 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 right. And it was just one of those, like, again, like, Oh my God. (laughs) And I mean, it's police brutality. I should not be okay with this, but also the guy was like describing how he raped this woman repeatedly. So I was like, and he just, I'll allow it. He just broke it with like just hands. Really? What them hands do though. Just out of curiosity. <laughs> so anyway, he rips this bench up 
And I love Ted just like in, off to the side, just smiling. And he says, let's go get those fuckers. And everybody just goes, Rrr! and it's, uh, <laughs> it's on. And we don't even see any of the game. Not at all. Not None. at all. Ted leans over and says, I told you it would be fun. Mm-hmm. And then it literally cuts to them coming back in. We hear the announcer overhead say that they won and that also that Roy Kent was playing like a you know a man possessed and they hadn't seen him play like that in forever. And everybody is celebrating and uh, Roy jumps up. <laughs> this is when he tells Keely he's been thinking about her a lot over the weekend because of her and her crazy. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> um... And they're going to go out. Rebecca comes in with a big smile to the she locker room. She comes in. She's so happy. She brings yeah. Sassy in and introduces, you know, well, goes to introduce her. And we see Ted and her. And they're, you know, she, mm-hmm. they obviously Sassy Smurf. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Throws his arms around her. Yeah. yeah I just really I wasn't sure. I thought she might come in and be kind of like weird about it. Well, and instead, you know, she she's genuinely like, congratulations. You know, like, she's... she should be weird. This is against the plan that she keeps saying is so important to her that she keeps, yep. you know, that she keeps doing shit. And yet she seems genuinely happy that they won. She seems caught up in the excitement. Mm-hmm. They all go to do karaoke, which we knew that that was coming, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we get them at the club and everybody is having a great time. There's a... I love a that Roy pulls her up onto the bench to do her bit from the thing. It's so good. It's That's so a good bit. I liked it. <laughs> but yeah, they go to karaoke. And then Rebecca uh, goes and sings Let It Go. There's we have a, some really fun, like, we have Sam so, does Wonderwall. Yeah, and then Beard does A Bad Romance by Lady Gaga and fucking kills it, in my opinion. <laughs> and then they uh, go outside for a smoke. Uh, Rebecca and Flo Mm -hmm. and this is when they are Rebecca is like you know I'm really sorry I disappeared you know and they hug it out and Rebecca says something like oh that man took so much from me you know Mm -hmm. trying to put the entire responsibility for the failing of her friendship with Sassy and her daughter Nora solely on Rupert yeah and she's like yeah no we're not doing that Mm-hmm. No, he was terrible. When she shows up at the hotel room, she calls him like old gray walnuts or something like that. Oh my God, that's right. <laughs> but uh, she's like, no, he was fucking awful. And he really did like put you away in his ivory tower. But, ma'am, you, you climbed every of step of that tower on your own, is the way yep. she says it. And I was like, oh. Yep. Yep, that's that Ouch. accountability. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, I really appreciated the outlining of their history. And because, like, sometimes, not always, but sometimes shows will, like, bring up somebody who's supposedly such a good friend and they are, you know, in, put into the story like they're, they've been here the whole time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to just kind of roll with that as a viewer and i liked that they were like no yeah it's weird she has this friend we have never heard about her and it's because rebecca has like completely left her behind you know Mm -hmm, and i like that there's mm -hmm. a sort of built in explanation for it yeah and also something that rebecca you know pulling away from your friends when you're going through it is something that some people do it can go either way you know but a lot of times when you're having a major change and like I said before, this is clearly somebody who's going to tell her about her own shit. I don't know. I just, I like the layers that it gives her. Yeah. I like that. Uh, we know that Rebecca and Rupert were married for 12 years and that they have been sort of, uh, I don't want to say strange, but Rebecca has been sort of absent for about six years. Right. Mm-hmm. So that puts us like midway through her marriage to Rupert is when she starts to pull away. Mm. And that could be a couple of different things, right? That could, we don't know what exactly it was. We don't know if things had started to go sort of rocky at that point or whether Rebecca was doubling down on her relationship with Rupert to try to save things and, you know, withdrawing from people. We don't really know. But we know that 
six years is a long time to go without they haven't spoken or seen each other yeah i'm assuming they probably like christmas cards you know and birthday cards shit like that but Mm -hmm. six years is a long time to go and sassy has shown up this weekend because it is their like anniversary weekend or whatever right yeah um so she's making this effort, this sort of overture that Rebecca hasn't made in all these years. So that tells mm-hmm. us a lot about Sassy as well. So yeah, Rebecca sings Let It Go. Um, and I really do appreciate you earlier. She mentions, uh, Sassy mentions that she's got a really beautiful singing voice. So there's like mm-hmm. a little bit of setup for this. And the same song that her and Nora used to sing, you know, do you want to, mm-hmm. not the same song, but the do you want to build a snowman song? So we know that this movie was meaningful for them. Yeah, exactly. And she begins to sing and she does. She has a great voice. She's, um, so, good. She's so good. She hands her jacket to Sam. Sam jumps up to take it without like, as soon as he sees her. Like, Look, I'm it. not trying to ship her and Sam. Or am I? What? <laughs> what do you mean? Or am I? <laughs> I'm, I'm not just trying. Or am I? <laughs> that Sam feels like the kind of energy that could be good for her, and I know probably sleeping with a player as the owner of the team is a conflict of interest and something that she should not be doing. Also, though, he's adorable. He really and, is adorable. I mean, just come on. Like, and he has this vibe that he is amazing in bed. I have no doubt. Agreed. This is a man who listens Agreed. and gives and is just like <laughs> attentive. Takes just direction. Happy to be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's just very so, earnest. Yeah. You know? And I think he genuinely thinks she's beautiful. And I think that he would just say so a lot. <laughs> and she needs to hear it. So that's what you want, you know? Do you think that she would, like, I mean, I don't know. There's a significant age difference. There's a there's a weird power dynamic difference. Mm-hmm. And she's yeah. so, like, you know, kind of closed off. And he's just so, like, open. I don't... She's got two very close friends who are very open. She's drawn to that energy, clearly. That's a good point. You know? That's a good point. Maybe she knows what she needs in her life. I'm just saying there's like... I know like, what I need in my life. There's a, a there's a tiny little flicker of a moment when she gets up and takes her jacket off. I'm, I'm watching it again now because she comes right after Beard singing Bad Romance and Bad, Beard mm-hmm. is wearing a shirt that is just awful. Um, <laughs> he doesn't let it stop him though. <laughs> but she... When he... I don't know. There's something about sam i don't know i don't know i don't know i'm just saying okay (laughs) okay so she begins singing let it go she sounds amazing and then all of a sudden we see ted's hands which are beginning to shake and he is beginning to have that sort of weird sound thing where you're like dissociating and everything falls to the background and it's just your breathing and like the blood rushing to your head this and, is a very, very good dramatization of like having a serious panic attack. I thought it yeah. was really well done. Like it's fucking really, really well done. It is. I the first time I ever had a panic attack that I can remember, um, I was in high school, and I was at this like summer program, and we were supposed to all go out and do this show for a like weird art project. I was at a summer program. We sculpted masks. And we were supposed to do this skit where it was like we were hosting a game show as the character that Mm. we did our masks in. And there was no plan. There was no setup. We hadn't rehearsed a skit. We hadn't even really come up with the idea more than 10 minutes before we were supposed to go out and do it for this like sort of variety act. It was all these different sections of this camp showcasing what they had been working on. So it was a bunch of different like small groups doing a sort of performance of different types. And I could not get over the fact that we were supposed to go out there in front of like 150 people and just improvise with people who were not here for theater. There were plenty of just like visual art kids and whatnot. This was not their thing. 
Mm. And they were just throwing us out. And the woman who was sort of running our group was, it didn't feel like had put no thought into it. And I was supposed to go out in like five minutes and I began to completely hyperventilate and I actually passed out very briefly. Oh, wow. Um, had no idea what was happening. And somebody said, it seems like you're having a panic attack. And I'd never even heard of that. Mm. And that became very much a thing as it turns out. But yeah, the whole way that this comes over him and he sort of was like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. Because there's a part of you somewhere that knows what's happening. But the fact that you have absolutely no control all of a sudden, yeah. that's the part that you're just like, but wait, but wait, but wait, I'm fine. I'm safe. I'm fine. But you're not safe somehow. Yeah. And part of you like knows that. And yeah, I just thought that this was really well done. And I don't know if like let it go is supposed to be the trigger for him because this is something that like with his kid or if it's just the actual subject matter of letting something go, there's a, could be a little bit a, of both. Like the, the whole scene is so, oh, maybe, maybe people, I don't know when it's going to kick us, but everything is so beautiful. Everybody is so excited. You know, Rebecca starts to sing and uh, Sassy is, you know, filming and uh, Roy is like mouthing the words in the background. Cause of course he knows all the words to the song. And, you know, it's such a beautiful, exciting, like, uplifting moment. And then Ted has, like, starts to hear his son's voice a little bit in his head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we start to see all the sort of physical signs and cues that we all recognize now, like means in yeah. panic attack, right? Um, And then the tunnel sort of tunnel sound happens mm -hmm, in a high mm -hmm. pitched in the way everybody becomes oh sort that of muffled. thing yeah that really is it and uh, that's how mine usually tend to be and mm -hmm. then he runs out and it's really some weird background shit that was happening as he's like making his way it, it turns out that they're in a much more private like vip section yeah. And he has to leave the karaoke section and go into like the general population of the club. There's like a whole actual club that they're mm -hmm. dancing and everything. And I was like, oh, yeah. okay. And I didn't like know that making was his what this place there. was. There's a really gross, like we see a guy like this, like throwing up into his cup. Oh, I didn't <laughs> see that. Oh, God. That's so bad. Oh, that's horrible. Um, and then and Rebecca comes out to comfort him, which I guess she just stopped in the middle of her song. I think it's been like, you know, a little bit of time has passed because no one else has come out, right? So if she had stopped in the middle of her song, at least, you know, it stands to reason people would be like, what are you doing? Where are you going? So I, I think guess, we're supposed yeah, to Yeah, believe... I think the timing is just a little unclear. So, yeah. okay, that makes sense. So, like, he's kind of been out there, you know, in his own shit and kind of maybe even lost track. Like, he doesn't even realize how long it's been mm -hmm, until mm -hmm. she's there. So... We don't see it, but it stands the reason that she has noticed that he has left in distress and cares enough to go check. Mm -hmm. Again, this person who, like, what are you doing? You're the mastermind behind his failure. What are? What is happening? <laughs> she is bad at this, is what it is. <laughs> she wants to be cold-hearted, cold-blooded, and she ain't that. And she wants to be for the, like, satisfaction of this one taking this one person down she's gonna just like wreck things for other people mm -mm. Mm -hmm. no she can't do it <laughs> so yeah she and she knows what it is she's like the one telling him that it's a panic attack which he yeah. apparently has never had one of these before yeah it seems like it might be the first one he doesn't mm -hmm. like am i dying am i crazy and she's mm -hmm. just like no it's just a she says attack. no more than the rest of us which i really <laughs> <laughs> and she offers to like walk back with him and stuff and uh i have to say you guys i know that i just go on and on about how beautiful rebecca is all the time but here's some more she has her hand around his shoulders and she has like the most perfect, elegant, round, like oval French manicure. That is <laughs> just like she could be a hand model. I don't understand how everything about this woman is so statuesque and perfect, but it's really, really rude. 
It's um, just annoying at this point. At this frankly. point. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just like, is there a part of you that's just like weird? Is What about your feet? Are your feet weird? Just give me that. <laughs> Let me have some weird feet at least. I sound like Tarantino over you here. You sound like, oh my God, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Damn it. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, so he shuffles away by himself. He's determined to like walk back and she watches him go with this expression. And later he texts her, thank you for being so kind. And you just see her being like, wow, kill me. Just stab yeah. me in the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And meanwhile, she's a, uh, when they all, when the club breaks out, <laughs> she goes is- back to the, see that waiter and i was like i were i do what i do want to mention there's a shot at the night at the club the karaoke where it's like danny and i forget who else but like they just don't have their shirts on for some reason <laughs> oh my god i missed that but that feels extremely <laughs> correct <laughs> i think it's him and colin but they're like in the club with the no shirt no shirt because we play soccer and that's what we do <laughs> you know what if i had that kind of body and i was at a club shirt off not? all the mm-hmm. time i mean yeah. i barely had a shirt on when i went to the club anyway i had this like little baby top that tied with these strings around my neck and my back and it was like a handkerchief size <laughs> so i, I was one step away and uh, may as well no judgment here right you know so um, uh but he, the, yeah, he finally sits down and signs it. There's also the moment where he like goes through the paperwork and he sees that she's already signed it. Yeah, yeah, it's and got one that, of those little like please sign here deals. Yeah, that happened to me when I got it. Brendan had already signed it. He was the one handling everything with a lawyer. And there is a weirdness to knowing they have done this. Yeah. already like as far as they are concerned they've it's signed done. on the dotted line and it's done and yeah. even if you want this there's a strangeness to that when they're not even in the room with you you're not watching it happen there it's not being done together you're so separate now that you're making yeah. this massive step completely apart yeah you wow. know it's just there's something about it it's really surreal mm. um there's a beautiful song playing through this end of the episode too. Um that I yeah. thought was really I looked it up it's by a woman named Celeste and it just it plays towards through the end and it's such a beautiful song. Um so yeah, Ted is like finally signing the papers. He's got his little army man on the table. Yeah. And uh we cut back to the club, everybody's out. Sassy is like trying to go to the pub with all the guys and she's inviting Rebecca and Keely, but <sighs> They have other plans. Them uh, pouring out all. Oh my God, there he is. <laughs> Danny's got no shirt on, but he's got his like jacket on over it, which honestly <laughs> is a fucking look, Danny. Like Jamie and, uh, tried to do this and you're just doing it like effortlessly. It like, like it's no big deal, right? <laughs> yeah. I, wow. He's got some hair on him too. What is that hair? He looks like he's from Saturday Night Fever with that hair. I don't know about oh it. Oh my God. <laughs> It's kind of, it, it works sometimes, and then sometimes I'm like, I don't care for this. Really, I can't decide. It really, it really depends on how the camera catches them, right? Yeah. I love Keely's dress, too, by the way, the dress she's wearing for this. Oh, I miss the like, dress. Her, like, green, sort of, as she's walking down the hallway, you can see it really well. Oh, there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, um, but, yeah, they're outside the club, and Rebecca is telling Keely, like, you know, you want to, like, get a ride back to the hotel. And that's when we see Roy, like, leaning up in the shadows this man in this fucking suit listen what the fuck he turned and there's like this red light bulb next to him and i was just like is this a fucking shoot for gq like it should have been it could have been it might as well have been he (laughs) is i have been wearing the shit out of that suit we went to a, we went to a wedding in January, and I got Steve. I was like, "Yeah, you need an all black suit with an all mm-hmm. black shirt and a black tie for reasons." So he was like, "Why?" I'm like, "I think it'll look good." You know, just <laughs> just because I thought of it by myself with no prep of just, any kind, just popped in my head. <laughs> so weird. He looked good too. I liked it. I was like, yeah. "All black is just hard to beat." 
you know it owen really wore is. that for the wedding it was like he had the red bow tie and a red like pocket mm. handkerchief i think or maybe it was just a red boutonniere but either way it was like mostly black and it just looked so good like it's, it's hard to go wrong <laughs> Um, and he has this expression when he looks over at her. Just the so whole good. thing is it's just so. <sighs> it's like it's almost like he blushes in anticipation, like he's mm-hmm. been waiting. For, like it's 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 like when I say blush, I want to like imply like a certain sort of like giddiness. Like mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, we're finally mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's so good. And it, it's also got a little bit of all shucks because he kind of turns. Away yes, too. it's oh, the it's all so shucks it's so because good. she's talking to his boss. Mm-hmm. about how she's gonna walk actually you know like <laughs> i don't know i just i like this a lot and i have to say again thank god jamie got sent away i don't know if he will ever come back but him being on the team while this is happening would have been very very bad she mm. can roll with him seeing other women right away i do not see jamie being okay he would mm. never it would just not work so <laughs> if he ever does come back and they are still seeing each other. That's going to be a whole thing that he's going to have to deal with. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, but, but yeah. Oh God, he looks good in this. Oh, he does. It's he disgusting. Really does. It really. It's does. so oh. funny to me how you thought he was so fine first episode, and I was just like, really? And now I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> listen. <laughs> it was for for you by the time you and i watched the first episode i had already gone through this but like mm-hmm. when i first started watching the show it also was a slow burn and crept yep. up on me um so rebecca goes back to the ho- wait to the wait to the, wait wait this this kiss in the hall oh does that this- happen before she goes back sorry yes <laughs> yes we cut to them right away and him leaning in and kissing her and she is kissing. This is a kiss. <laughs> like this is an um. I, I'm I'm yeah. trying to consume like, you, kind of. That kiss. door should have opened, and they should have fallen through the door, mm-hmm. stumbled back onto the bed, kind of kiss, right? But no, like a little, but no. I'm glad he pulled away because he wants this to be something. And I don't know that, Is that he knows what you think how to do that. I think so. Okay. I do. And not trying to imply that you can't just immediately fuck somebody and it be something. Like, of course that can happen. But I feel like it can sort of ha- like create a tone mm-hmm. that is less serious and... I kind of feel like he wants it to be more serious and he wants her to like know that, but he doesn't know how to say it, you know? And I don't know if she's used to this at all because she's dated fucking 22 year old men. It's true. She told us when she had that conversation that she's been doing sort of the same thing for a little while now. Yeah. I, uh, I feel like it could be understandable that she's sort of like, wait, why, what, what went wrong when nothing mm. went wrong? He's just a fucking adult <laughs> and yeah. he has some restraint, you know? What do you think her, so like, she's clearly confused. Like in this moment, mm-hmm, like she mm-hmm. does a little joke thing, like checking her breath and everything, but she's clearly like not really sure what just happened here. Yeah. What do you think? Like, do you think she starts to think he's not really in her or do you think she like gets offended or do you think she gives him time I think and she's space? confident that he's into her but I think she'll be like dude you've got to figure out what you want to do here because okay you know because she's very straightforward and I'm sure to him it doesn't seem like mixed signals to him he's like I just kissed the shit out of her she has to know right. but he doesn't get what it's like so i feel like she has to sort of clarify and be like you need to step back and look at the way this seems to me because all right so you think she's the type of person like she's up front enough that she'll be like hey what the fuck Mm -hmm. you know yeah i think so um (laughs) covering sookie there's this amazing moment where she basically because like bill is being fucking bill fucking bill fucking bill (laughs) and at one point in the books she's just like man you never even actually asked me out. You didn't actually say this was a date. You haven't bought me flowers. You haven't done anything to actually indicate that we are even dating. But then 
you want to be like territorial about me and you want (laughs) me to be territorial about you like I have any right or you have any right if that's what you want you need to fucking say so and it was just like so nice because she just (laughs) absolutely read him um could have used more of that in the show uh, (laughs) look book sookie is so much smarter and so much better than show sookie it is not even oh um so then we go to Rebecca at the bar and she's eyeballing that fucking waiter that who is receptive, apparently. Listen, he is here for it. Mm-hmm. He is, and why wouldn't he be? He saw I mean, that manicure. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if it was the manicure? He was like, you know, she's a very attractive woman, but what really sealed it for me was that that oval <laughs> French tip, man. That really does it for me. I had a teacher in the fourth grade oval french tip and (laughs) just stuck with me forever um but yeah they're the whole vibe here of anticipation from her is so optimistic it's just Mm. we haven't seen this from her you know and i really hope it went well i really do i I, you know like like, how could it not i don't know (laughs) how it could not but shit's weird sometimes man and then um, the sort of, uh, what did you think of the the way it ended? Uh, this this visitor that Ted gets, I can't. I don't know what she's doing. It looks when like she tells, she's just walking in to fuck him. When she says earlier in the episode, she wanted to ride that mustache like a jet ski. Oh my god! <laughs> can't relate. So I feel like we do know what's. <laughs> I feel like it, but like, I don't feel like he would necessarily be that receptive, but he lets her in. He steps aside and just lets her in. He literally just signed his divorce papers. Exactly. Five minutes ago. We have been watching him be torn apart by this. And then this beautiful woman shows up and he doesn't seem like the type that would be into like just a casual deal. Right. But, like, when you just sign your paper, it could go either way, mm. you know? And, like, I wouldn't think he would be receptive. But also, when you're this emotional and mm. it's a relationship-related emotionality, maybe, I mean. Do you want to you wager a guess? He doesn't stop her from walking in. And he just kind of raises his eyebrows, like, okay. Yeah. And there's no there's no response in his face that makes me think that he is excited. Yeah, he doesn't do like the cartoon eyebrows, you know, like no. whoa, you know, he there's, doesn't do any of that. It's just kind of a like, I suppose. And mm-hmm. I can't I feel like he's not gonna go for it. But I mean, they could I don't know. Just spend the night, you know, drinking and telling stories. She might make a move and he might pass, you know. I don't know. It's, it's given what we've known of him so far, does it seem like something that he would do to you? No, it doesn't. People act weird when their emotions are heightened. So I wouldn't be like, this is completely out of character and I don't accept it if it does happen. Right. right. But it doesn't feel like him to me. Um, and I'm interested whether she thinks it's like him. Like if she, if he doesn't go for it, will that offend her or will she mm. get it or what? Do you think that if something happens with them, does that complicate her friendship with Rebecca? Do you think it like, makes that's what I, that weirder? was my main question was because I have floated the very vague idea of maybe Rebecca and Ted being sort of good for each other, not even shipping mm-hmm. them really, but just their personalities feel like they could work. And I have no sense that Rebecca is attracted to him at all. So mm-hmm. I think in that respect, which I was kind of worried about, not a problem in terms of it just being somebody who works for her though. And this is her close okay. friend. Her and close she friend. is she is she gonna try and hide from her that she's been working against him this whole time when her friend maybe is sort of into him? How seriously into him is she? Is she 
hooking up with him and then going home after this weekend away? Or is she like into him, into him at all? I don't know. It all depends on like how serious she is about it. Right. And I I can't say that, that even if he does sleep with her, I don't think he's serious about it. Right. Right. Can can Ted be casual about something like that is another question. Yeah. Hmm. And I feel like no, and that's why he wouldn't, because he knows. But also, she gives the, the impression that she wants to be casual. The way that she just shows up and rolls in, you know? Mm-hmm. So maybe it would feel like if I'm going to be casual with anybody, I could do it with her yeah. because she really just does not care. She made a joke about going to the pub with like 18, you know, mm-hmm, beautiful, mm-hmm. handsome young men who she probably could have taken any bedded. one of them to bed, right? She could have bedded any one of them <laughs> with like no hassle. I love and the word she, bedded. She, I know I we don't, don't use why. it really anymore. <laughs> but she shows up at Ted's door instead of any of those, you know, young men mm-hmm. that I'm sure would have been happy to have her. Mm. I don't know. Maybe she's just done with dickheads. Could be, listen, aren't we all though? We've reached like a point in our lives, you know, where we're like, ugh. It's true. Yeah, you were like, fine ugh. as hell and good in bed, but you're, you're like, were not worth it. You were only, you're 24 though. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Exactly. <laughs> no offense, but ugh. ugh. So deep from my soul. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the episode ends with uh, various people either having company in their bedroom or not having company in their bedroom. As yes, the case may you, be. You know, you're Keely or a Ted or a Rebecca. <laughs> I really can't decide. Yeah. I'm really curious to see how Rebecca reacts if they, even if they don't sleep together, if she spends the whole night in his room, even if they're just talking, I feel like Rebecca's going to have feelings on that either way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't wait for the next episode. Me too. Ugh, oh uh, Erica, Brett Goldstein is definitely a human male. Girl, that is the truth. Mm. <laughs> he is. I just, I went through such a fucking, when I first was watching the show and I like started really having real feelings mm-hmm. and they're real feelings. <laughs> oh, my God, I had so bad. Oh, like, just like every, oh, he's, it, he's just delightful as a person. Everything I can tell. From his from his weird but really wholesome Muppet appreciation, he's a oh my god! Like, I watched that. Did you watch that? <laughs> of course, I watched that. Those who don't like the in the patrons only Facebook group, I can't remember who shared it, but somebody shared him guesting on Sesame Street. I think Street. Jamie. I think Jamie did. Um. Yeah, and it was pretty adorable, and he gets right up in Cookie Monster's face. <laughs> it's pretty. He fun. just. He is just like really funny, very smart. I just enjoy, it. and it's weird, like Erica said, like not an attraction to him. And I, he just, I just, but the, again, the whole cast I find delightful every time they, you know, ow, ow. You keep saying every you got to put your hair up when you record. You got to start. To, you need like a recording really, scrunchie I, that you leave I at your do. desk. I really do. Uh, but yeah, just like, just they're funny and delightful and, and a joy to listen to. And he's one of my favorites. So I would, when we're done, I just recommend going to like find all his interviews because they're just, they're just so much fun. Noted. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, everybody. Well, thank you all so much for listening. And thank you, everybody who came to the Crowdcast. We had to do a second one because of technical issues that took up the first half hour of our fucking first one. (laughs) Um, And I just want to mention that normally I read out new patrons' names on the show, and I haven't been doing that lately. And a lot of that is due to the change-up in schedule and the fact that we're doing this live has Mm. thrown me off my game a little bit. So... I've gotten out of that habit because I'm focusing on a whole other thing with them being live. I am going to start doing that again next episode. So if you became a patron, you know, since the last recording that I've said your name or said other people's names on, you will be read aloud in a coming one. So stay tuned. I haven't forgot about you and I do appreciate you. I did send individual thank you messages like videos so people still know i appreciate them (laughs) but i like to do it on here too just to remind everybody um and i think that's everything is there anything else you want to add 
No, ma'am. I'm just looking forward to the next episode. I can't believe we're already at, like, this was episode six? Seven. Seven? Mm -hmm. My God. We're already at episode eight. We're almost, uh, oh my God, it went so fast. Yeah. But not oh, but fast enough two, for me. We we, we did like two episodes the first two times. That yeah. That's really what it was, right? Oh, I really I'm wanted so to ask you to do a second one tonight, but I'm, I'm really glad we so didn't. Excited. No, no, there's no, there's no time. There's, there's no, no way. Time. <laughs> but I can't wait. I can't wait for the next one. And I hope everybody is enjoying listening to us talk about one of my all-time favorite shows. Even though it's new, it's definitely all-time. Yeah. So we'll see you next week. All right, guys. Until then, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. My hands won't be tied down And I will not lay them down Cause I can finally see the truth So simple but so clear Accepting the notion's depths for out Spoiled Network Podcast.